On the bench today, we have a set of Qi wire uh, inductive chargers. Uh, what is a the Qi inductive charging? Well, that is the QI, pronounced Qi, standard for inductive charging, and it is uh, very popular. Basically, you have a, an inductor, and then in the uh, charger, that is plugged in so to a small uh, control board and then your phone can sit on top of that and get uh, receive power and you don't have to plug in the uh, USB cable directly to it. This is really handy. I use this quite a bit. I come I just uh, plug this in on my desk and leave it sitting there and when I come back from a meeting I can put the uh, phone right down on top of it and it uh, will charge up while I'm between things grab my phone as I leave my desk. I no longer have to mess around with that USB cable and it'll keep my phone pretty well charged up all day. And there's a variety of these. You can buy them pre-made like this for, oh gee, the Samsung, the real Samsung ones might run you 30 or 40 dollars. There are plenty of knockoffs that are 10 dollars or maybe maybe 20. Uh, but you can also buy these little boards and they're great. Um, they seem to work pretty well uh, so far from my basic testing. And uh, now, if you're f if you have a newer phone like what this, uh, what is this, an S7 from Samsung, you'll have that uh, charging uh, that charging receiver built into the back of the case. However, if you have a you know some other device like this tablet that does not have it built in, you can get an aftermarket uh, wireless charger and plug it in. It has a little USB micro connector. Uh, by the way, it sits very flat to the case and it is very tough to pry it out <laughs> when you've got it in there. And this is supposed to supply up to the uh, standard 5 watt, uh, 5 volts at 1 amp power. But again, we'll try that out and see how that goes. There are uh, several uh, different versions of these. Um, if you just Google, or sorry, go to you know, eBay, you can look at these uh, all over the place. Uh, there's, uh, this is the one that I selected, and it has a very straightforward design. There's not much going on with it. Uh, there's another one, like, uh, let's see, there's, oh, a couple of others. I think this is one that um, I picked up, uh, one of my other ones here somewhere. I'm not sure where that, well, that's not it here, this one. Um, and as you can see with this one, it has a few more things happening on it, uh, but these pretty much all work the same. Now, of all of these, this one's probably the weirdest. It has um, a whole bunch of different, if I can get this dang thing to uh, focus here, it has a much greater amount of circuitry and a and three coils. I did not find this one to work any better than the others, even though it was a little more expensive, I believe. And uh, one of the things that we have with this is that you have to place this, your, your receiving coil, direct, you know, in the proper position, so pretty much directly over that. And so there's physical positioning of this device, of this receiver over the coil. Uh, there are some more advanced units that will use multiple coils, and this one may this one may actually do that, but I didn't observe the behavior, uh, wasn't able to observe that, where they can uh, ad adjust what's happening in the induction uh, into each of the coils and kind of steer steer the field. So as long as you get in the neighborhood, it will charge. I don't know that that really worked that well. Uh, it didn't seem to work that well for me. Let's take a closer look at the uh, board here and see what's going on. And it's very small. Uh, it's going to fit very well into my little case. Uh, what we have here is a small ST uh, Micro. This is a uh, 8S003F3P6 right here. And that is a straightforward um, 
16 megahertz Harvard architecture uh, microcontroller. That's that's really it. And uh, from what I'm looking at here, I don't think they're really uh, over overdoing it too much. It's probably very, as I remember, this is uh, very cheap, like 50 cents or something in quantity. And then right next to it, we have an LM324 uh, quad op amp. That could be used for a couple of things, uh, but most like but probably used for the backscatter because the receiver uh, trans the that is like your phone which is receiving the power from this coil is going to transmit data back to the chip to the transmitter this chip here and it does that by backscatter that is it loads its receiving coil which causes current fluctuations here that are probably being picked up by this LM324 and then uh, Interpre interpreted by the microcontroller. Uh, then we've got a small uh, set of FETs here uh, acting as an H bridge to drive the coil. That's about it. There's not much to it. So what I plan to do is to take this little simple 3D printed case and mount the board in here. Now I'll relocate this LED and I will position this uh, inductor at exactly the right spot up here on the top and the proper distance up. Then uh, there will be this small uh, pouch that will go on the front, this U-shaped piece, and then uh, a faceplate. And we'll have our little holder. And in the car, I can simply take my phone, if I put it in the right position, and drop it straight down into this case when I get in the car and it will charge my phone while, uh, while I'm driving because I don't really need to see the phone when I'm driving. Uh, I'm I don't use GPS very much. It's Kansas City. It's uh, hard to get lost up here and I don't really need it, the phone out when I'm driving so I can just charge it up. I won't have to mess with uh, getting in the car and popping that uh, cord into it uh, which seems to always come loose during the, tri during the drive. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. We will uh, use a, the EEV blog meter here and then uh, plug in. We'll try this uh, little guy here. and We're going to plug that in and uh, measure the voltage that's coming out of the receiver using the, the meter here and uh, then we will and we're going to measure it right here pretty close to the plug and then that will be connected up to an electronic load which will uh, measure the current and load the device up and we'll see how it does all right in normal operation we just plug this in and set the coil somewhere in the right spot there we go we get a bright blue light coming on that's great. That's exactly what we want to see. And this one's reasonably fast at figuring out that it uh, has lost the signal connection. Uh, at least one of these, I think it was this one, might take a minute or two to figure out that there's something going on, that it is, is no longer charging. So let's try out this little guy. So we now have the uh, everything set up, and we will position the charger right there we're measuring we're already measuring fairly low voltage uh, 4 8 is just not really uh, that good of a voltage uh, for charging I guess it'll probably work but it really should be more like a full 5 volts if I hold that down yeah I think this is gonna work for your Android tablets and stuff like that probably but it's not it's just not gonna be great let's um, load it up a little bit then Let's go 100 milliamps at a time. Let's turn on our load. And we get a little load, 100 milliamps. We're good. Still getting the 485 voltage. Oh, wow. We're at 500 milliamps. We're starting to drop off. We've lost 50 millivolts. Whoa. And we've completely dropped out at, pretty much completely dropped out here at 0.5 amps. So at 600 milliamps. Yeah, this is just not working very well. I'll try it in another position and see if that helps. There we go. Now it's holding up a little better. So boy, you got to be real careful how you position this one. 700 milliamps, it's starting to drop out. 
and most chargers, most phones would probably stop charging here at this point, so it won't quite get you that one amp that you're expecting. Yeah, not really. It'll get you 700 milliamps probably with very careful uh, positioning of this coil, uh, over the receiver over the transmitting coil, if you manage to get it all in the right place. So, uh, not going to recommend this. Just not too good. So here's the completed case. Let's take a quick look inside. Over here, you've got the uh, circuit board all glued in, and uh, then up here in the corner is the LED. Uh, I didn't. I uh, used the uh, hot glue up here, and I did not push the LED through the corner of the case. I just wanted the light to come out, so the hot glue made kind of a little light pipe, which was pretty handy. And then here in the middle is the coil, and I put it on top of a bed of hot snot in order to raise it to the appropriate height. And that seems to have worked pretty well. Uh, this is a high temperature hot melt glue, so it should hold up in the uh, Kansas summer uh, heat. But, uh, you know, I won't find out for a few months. Here we have back to the box. Here's the uh, USB port, so we'll plug that in and take a look at that, see if it comes up. There you go. Blue light comes on for just a moment, and then uh, we've got the red indicator for the pilot light. Put the phone in, take a look. Sure enough, we're up and, and charging. So that's great. Uh, if I move it around in here, it stays charging. Because this can move around a little bit. Now, uh, when I'm in the car, it, when, when it's in there, and this is moving around a little bit, if it starts to end up rattling, what I'll do is put a piece of uh, Velcro uh, loop side in here to uh, kind of keep it from banging around too much if it's bothering me when it's driving. So that's it. Thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please hit the like button and subscribe.